most important, most wondrous map ever produced by humankind. With genomics setting a foundation in the quest to uncover the mysteries of life, what lies next, I wonder? Perhaps time has now come to appreciate the significance of omic technologies such as proteomics. Proteins and proteomics are central to connect genomes with phenotypes with normal biological processes. There is no way to predict from the genome itself the crucial features of proteins. The real key here is that genomics can only tell you of the snapshot of the organism, whereas proteomics is, will enable us to, to look at the, the organism dynamically. Proteomics is a science where we want to know about all the proteins that are coded for by the genome. Proteomics addresses whole systems and uses a broad unbiased approach to derive new findings. What are the technologies driving proteomics? Several techniques like mass spectrometry, protein microarrays and label-free biosensors have been used in proteomics to elucidate the expression, localization and interaction of proteins. Unraveling the proteome is a very onerous and complex journey that demands the efforts and insights of an interdisciplinary team of scientists. Fourteen years after the release of the first draft of the human genome, Scientists are working on the map of the human proteome using high-resolution mass spectrometry combined with high-stringency informatics and other methods including antibody-based protein microarrays. In addition to mass spectrometry-based protein maps, scientists used tissue array platforms to spatially locate proteins in human cells and tissues and map their expression levels in various biological tissues. One major effort in this area has resulted in the Human Protein Atlas. Despite this progress, there exist missing proteins which are yet to be annotated. Scientists hypothesize that the missing proteome could be a result of relative low abundance, tissue type, development or stress-specific expression of proteins. With the road ahead requiring comprehensive proteogenomic analysis and consideration of many additional sources of biological information. What is the applicability of proteomics in healthcare? Researchers are using novel approaches for biomarker discovery by studying the differential expression of alternatively spliced isoforms in cancer, low abundance blood based biomarkers for disease diagnosis, studying cell secretome, analyzing human immune response to develop vaccines improving proteomic methods to study the host pathogen interactions and so on. Um, hopefully some of the biomarkers that we discover will be useful for identifying disease early, for helping doctors identify the best prognosis for patients. Proteomics has the unique ability to analyze protein production, degradation and post-translational modifications which are highly pertinent for biomarker discovery and translation. In glycosylation solution specific form of protein will uh, give us a more specific and sensitive approach to detect a disease uh, in the tissue and the body fruit. Several novel techniques such as multiplex protein microarrays and bead-based arrays are also contributing to biomarker discovery. Protein microarray contains thousands of proteins in one chip which allow us to explore protein functions with a certain molecular probe. A recent innovation in this field is the development of ultra-high-density peptide arrays comprising of millions of peptides, thereby allowing large-scale probing of biological samples. Present uh, diagnostic as well as therapeutic strategies that are uh, existing in clinical scenario, clinical setting, uh, are all a result of uh, the biology discoveries that have gone on over the last uh, 50 years. The proteomics community has kept up its expectation of being a complementary approach alongside genomics, thus contributing to diagnostic assays in clinics. How can proteomics cater to the needs of precision medicine? What if figuring out the right dose of medicine was as simple as taking our temperature? And that's the promise of precision medicine. 
the precision medicine means one patient, one drug at a time. And therefore, if you can detect specific target for any given cancer type, we can then develop treatment based on the target information. And therefore, the precision medicine is going to be the future of oncology. It's my opinion that to be able to figure out precision medicine, both at the diagnostic level, as well as to be able to determine the, the pathways in which drugs should be targeted to um, you, uh, you have to be able to really quantify well all of the proteomics. How is proteomics moving towards targeted validation? One of the challenges facing proteomics is being able to get from the discovery all the way to validated markers that are useful in the clinic. So that's why targeted proteomics is so important. By sacrificing a little bit in terms of depth of coverage, but selecting analytes that we care very deeply about, we can design proteomic assays that will be able to measure analytes, whether they're proteins or peptides, each and every time that we do an experiment. More specifically, uh, this essay has been now widely accepted in the community as a SRM or a, a performant triple quadruple instrument. Uh, and I think it's become very clear uh, that those methods, uh, including multiple reaction monitoring and, and PRM uh, and allied methods, are going to have a major impact on uh, the development of, of clinical diagnostics and then ultimately on uh, patients' uh, health uh, and life. Innovations in technologies like targeted proteomics have allowed researchers to validate interesting targets, overcoming the bottleneck of availability of reliable analytical reagents. The transparent pipelines has given us the capability to analyze proteomics in, a, in an unprecedented manner, but that has also given us the capability to understand which proteins are being uh, expressed, which proteins can be analyzed by, by mass spectrometry, and we can utilize that in a targeted approach. I've been developing uh, Sky for the past eight years, and it's grown incredibly. Uh, it's in use around the world, and it's exciting to see that uh, Proteomics researchers really seem to feel that it helps them with their research. The SWOT MS method was to expand the, the, the SRM type approach to much larger number of proteins, potentially hundreds to, to thousands of proteins. The advent of new age techniques like SWOT with ability to identify and quantify proteins or peptides over a dynamic range and powerful tools like Skyline and SRM Atlas have added to the arsenal of targeted proteomics. How is the global proteomics community poised? The Human Proteome Organization is an international scientific organization that promotes international scientific cooperation, educational training, and technology breakthroughs in proteomics. HUPO was started in February 2001 in Versailles, France, around the time when the first draft of the human genome was released. The Human Proteome Project was launched nearly 10 years later in Sydney at our annual World Congress. HUPO coordinates its flagship scientific project that's called the Human Proteome Project, and that is broken down into three main thrusts, a chromosomal effort, a biology effort, and a disease effort. And it has three supporting technology pillars, bioinformatics, mass spectrometry, and antibodies that support those thrusts. It must take a comprehensive, proteome-wide view of cell functions. Connect the genome with the proteome and the phenotypes. Whether you are an early researcher or a seasoned veteran seeking to make important new discoveries, I encourage you to engage in this vibrant and really exciting project. The journey of proteomics has been promising. My belief is that the proteomics community can contribute immensely to functional biology and decipher innovative solutions. Persistent efforts from communities like HUPO has helped proteomics establish an undeniable international presence. This has established the broader theme of research directions, thus translating the code of life. <laughs>